Hey everybody, I hope you are doing well and thank you so much for taking the time to watch my Whiskey Wandering videos. I just want to say that I am so thankful for the opportunity to make these videos, to gain some whiskey knowledge and perspective, and to be able to share it with all of you, these experiences, and I hope really that you enjoy them as well. Now today, I am stepping out of my usual comfort zone of Costco, which I do love, and taking a dip into the deep end of the pool at one of my local Total Wine and More stores in Pasadena, because I was able to pick up one of my long sought after whiskey crushes, the Red Dress Pedro Jimenez. While I was there, I also saw some really interesting whiskeys at the store that expanded the circle of whiskeys that are in my intellectual orbit as well. But now, before I get to it, if you like these little videos of me whiskey shopping, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when my newest videos get put up. So thanks again and let's get down to it. So like I said in this video, I ventured out of the usual comfort zone of Costco and got into the melee of my local Total Wine and more. And it was pretty much just by chance that I happened to be in the area and I had seen the Total Wine mentioned on Reddit and other reviews. So I decided to take a look and boy, do they have a lot, a lot of whiskeys. It's sort of really sort of overwhelming. But on this trip, I very quickly got laser focused on a whiskey that had been hard to find, at least here, and that I have been lusting after for a bit of time. And that is the Redbreast PX or Pedro Jimenez. Because I got turned on to the Redbreast first when I bought the bottle of Redbreast 21, just because basically it looked nice and I tried it and I fell in love with it. Then I ended up buying the Redbreast Lestal, the 12 year old, the 15 year old, and now finally the Pedro Jimenez, which it seems to be one of the last pieces to my Redbreast collection. In fact, I think that the only thing that I'm missing right now is the Redbreast 27, which I just barely missed a couple months ago at Costco. It got all sold out from under me. And the Redbreast cast strength, and then I should basically have a full house. Okay, so despite those holes in my collection, I was super excited to find this Pedro Jimenez, and I think they must have just put it out because I also got the case to go with it, and I bought, well, I bought all six that were on display. Sorry, gentlemen. Today, <laughs> I guess I'm just that guy. Now, the Redbreast PX is billed as the big brother to the Lestal, which are both aged in Oloroso casks from the south of Spain, but Pedro Jimenez is supposed to have a much more pronounced taste and personality, and, well, price for that matter. At Total Wine & More, I was able to pick up the Redbreast PX for $94.99, which is pretty good considering that when you look at the general street shelf price high and low, the high is at $199.99, while the low, the lowest I could find was actually at $167.99. So that puts the average price at $183.99. So again, $94.99, I got it for about $89 under the average street price on the shelf, or 48.37% savings. So not too bad. Thanks, Total Wine. The ABV on the PX is at 46%, so it is in the same range as the Redbreast Lestal. Actually, it's identical to the Redbreast Lestal, the Redbreast 21, which I had always thought was a perfect amount of heat for these types of Irish whiskey. And the tasting notes mention things like toffee, gooey caramel, sweetness, nutmeg, and zestiness. Oh, also, and uh, toasted nuts. Now, the reviews have also been pretty good on it as well. They got an average score of 88.4 points, which is very respectable, and mentioned that it has high drinkability, great for after dinner, and a overall win for the brand. So in conclusion, well, <laughs> like I said, I bought a case of it, but I think they may still have some left, at least from what the cashier told me. Again, I feel bad about it, but sometimes you just gotta hoard. Uh, either way, I bought a lot of it because you never know when uh, it's going to be back in stock again, or if you could ever get it, and if you can get it, at what price it may eventually be. Now, as I mentioned, Total Wine has a much more complex and cosmopolitan selection of whiskeys than does normally at Costco. I mean, it feels like the international terminal at Heathrow Airport, just all kinds of crazy varieties and strengths and origins and designs of whiskeys. It is a bit overwhelming. But a whiskey that caught my eye, and I don't think I will probably ever see at Costco, is this Old Forester 1910. Look, as a whiskey drinker or a person drawn to whiskeys, there is something about nostalgia that definitely plays into the taste and the image of the whiskey that you buy. And when I see some sort of late 19th century or early 20th century reference dates on a bottle, well, it is bound to pique my interest. The Old Forester 1910 is interesting because it has a heritage of being a whiskey that is a part of the oldest continuous bourbons in production. It was originally founded by a pharmaceutical salesman, George Garvin Brown, 
who named it after the physician, Dr. Forrester, who vouched for its validity as a quote-unquote medical remedy. <laughs> you gotta love the early 20th century. The 1910 specifically references a date in the company's history when there was a fire in the warehouse on October 22nd, 1910, and they had to move the whiskeys to other barrels in order to save them, and then accidentally created a double oaked flavor that the 1910 is known for. So 1910 is going to be a homage to that event. And although it would have been cool, I don't think it's actually true that there is probably not a tiny bit of 1910 whiskey from the original uh, fire that's in this one, but I don't think there is. Now the price here at Total Wine and More is listed at $54.99, which is not so high on the perspective. The high and low prices on the street shelf price is at $79.99 for the high and $64.99 for the low. This puts the average street price at $72.49. So if you can find it for $54.99, like here, you'd be saving around $17.50 or 24.14%. Now the ABV on this Old Forester in 1910 is at 46.5%, so just a smidge higher than the Redbreast PX. It has tasting notes that mention that it has a very chewy mouthfeel, heavy layers of burnt caramel, vanilla, toasted marshmallow, and light clove. The average score that it got was at a very respectable 85.2 points, but they did mention that it is a bit one-dimensional, so sort of not complex, a bit heavy on the sweet side, and I guess sort of like Rocky IV. The review scores were pretty spread out, so it does seem like this is going to be a whiskey that is more of a love it or kind of hate it kind of whiskey. So, you know, in conclusion, I thought I would like to try some of this old Forrester line, but not sure if this would be a good entry point for me. So I'll probably start with something that's a bit more down the middle of the old Forrester line than this 1910, which might be off the beaten path a little bit. Now, the last whiskey I'm going to talk about in this video is the Michters, 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 I've heard it sounds a couple ways, single barrel straight rye whiskey. This is another one that pops up pretty often when people post their whiskey collections on Reddit or Instagram or wherever. It was basically unknown to me before this um, because of the fact that it has a label that seems a lot more Bavarian beer hall than it does Kentucky bourbon for me, so it, it just sort of flew under my radar. Also, when I look at the reviews for it, it seems to get a lot of flack for being tight-lipped and, uh, how do we say it, borderline dubious about where the whiskey is sourced or from which distillers it comes from, so some people find that a bit off-putting. I guess they don't like a little mystery in their life. Either way, it is made from 51% rye, corn, and malted barley. It is aged in new charred oak barrels. This is the least expensive whiskey that I'm going to talk about today from this visit. It's listed at $43.99 at Total Wine and More, which is just slightly better than the high and low street price at $59.99 on the high side and $48.99 on the low side if you were to find it on the shelves. This puts the average price at $54.49, so if you did get it at Total Wine, you'd save around $10.50 or 19.27%. But since the price is really not that high, the savings are a good percentage, but not the amount very much on the actual cash. It's just not much cash. Now, the ABV on it is a bit low for my taste. It's the lowest on this list at 42.4%. Um, so it does may lack a little bit of that oomph that you would expect from a rye whiskey on the palate. The tasting notes do mention, though, that it is very, very vanilla forward, as well as flavors of leather, slight brown sugar, Smarties, uh, like the candy, and candy corn, which... Sounds pretty good, and it's not just because I love candy corn, not so secretly. But also because it seems very much like soda-esque flavor. Think cream soda. The kind that grandpa would stiff it up for you as a kid to quote-unquote put some hair on your chest. <laughs> you know, maybe that was just me. Yeah, he was a bit of a rascal. <laughs> now the average review on it gave it a pretty low score of 77 points and emphasizes that it is drinkable but really short on character development and sort of rushed, sort of like the last seasons of Game of Thrones. So in conclusion, I think that I will hold out for some of the more sought after versions of this brand, but this seems like at the price point a pretty good entry for somebody who hasn't tried it before. But, you know, I guess actually what will probably really happen is I'll find the more expensive version of this. I'll never drink it and then actually get this one and then actually drink it. I don't know. Does anyone else do that? All right. So that was it for today's Whiskey Wandering at the Total Wine and More in Pasadena, which is in Los Angeles, California. And you know what? Thank you all so much again for watching to the very end. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get notified when my newest videos get put up. Also, don't forget, and I guess I mean this more than I really thought, especially in this case, if you see a whiskey that you love, just buy it. 
because if you don't, somebody else surely will, and it might even be me. So have a good rest of your day, and I'm out. Adios.